is similar to Peter in the boat saying, Lord, depart from me, I'm a sinful man, was the people when they came across the lake after the storm and they met the demoniac, remember? And all of a sudden, Jesus cast out the legion of demons that were in him. And it says, says in the Bible that he was in his right mind. And when the people of the region saw him, they asked Jesus to leave. Why would they do that? Shouldn't they have emptied out the psych ward and said, Lord, if you could do it for that guy, then all these other people can be healed too, right? But they couldn't grasp what was happening. It was too big of a shift. And the first thing they said is leave because our pigs are dead. <laughs> Selah. <laughs> right? Sometimes we want to hold on to our pigs. Look what it says. The people of the Gerasene district asked him to leave for they had been seized with great fear. It was too unusual. It was too out of the ordinary. And what I'm saying is we're, pre we're praying God move among us. We sang it this morning. You're still doing miracles. You're still taking down mountains. Demons are still being cast out of people. We do not have to be bound by the afflictions of this world. They're light and momentary afflictions is what Paul said, right? So when you read the parables, and that's really, again, back to the beginning of this, is that that's how the parables felt to the apostles sometimes. Jesus would tell a story, and then it was really hard for them to understand, so they just kind of checked out until they got to him later, and they said, can you explain to us what the parable means? And when it comes to the sower, I'm guessing most of you here know about the sower with the seeds, right? And there were four different kinds of soil, and that's representative of our heart. And the first fell on the road, and obviously it had nowhere to go in. The second fell among the rocky soil. The third fell among the weeds. And then the fourth fell on good ground. And then he translated that for them and said, no, it's a hard heart. It's somebody who's bound by the things of the world, the, the, the cares of this world, and the deceitfulness of riches were the weeds. We're in a very high-level first world country, aren't we? So we could easily fall victim to the deceitfulness of riches in our culture, when Trisha and I were in uh, Africa, in Mozambique, that was not one of their main problems. They were not in, in being caught up in the deceitfulness of riches. They were very, very poor. It was a third world country like I had never seen before. They were just wondering about next meals kind of thing. They were not caught up in the deceitfulness of riches, but they had a different battle that they were facing. So we have to recognize what our territorial spirits are and recognize that comfort could almost be our biggest enemy. As much as it's such a blessing, when it comes to being hungry for God, the comfort of our flesh, we don't want to give up our pigs. See what I'm saying? I'm not trying to get too hard on you here because it's all of us. So he told this to the Pharisees. Matthew 21, 28. A man had two sons. He went to the first one and said, Son, go and work today in the vineyard. And he answered, I don't want to. But later he changed his mind and went. And then verse 30, the father went to his other son and said the same thing. And this one said, I will go work in the field, sir. But he didn't go. Which of the two did what his father wanted? The first, they replied. That's right, Yeshua said to him. I tell you that the tax collectors and prostitutes are going into the kingdom of God ahead of you. Come again, Jesus? We're the Pharisees. We like our pigs. You get the point? Like, we're leaning on our understanding because that's been our value structure our whole lives. We've always been valued by other people because we could outsmart them, literally. We know the scriptures better than they do. But most people in that day couldn't even go to school. Most people didn't know how to read. The 12 disciples that he picked were not college grads. They weren't seminary grads. They were blue-collar people. Does that seem odd to anybody? That he would pick blue-collar people? Why? Because the kingdom of God is for everybody. And that's what he's saying. These prostitutes and tax collectors are getting it before you. And you're the Pharisees and you know the law. You should be getting it before them. But the intellect has become a, an idol. And that's another thing that we face in our culture is that we're not humbled by the word of God. We look at it and read it and say, well, we know what that means, and there's nothing more for me to know. But to you, it has been given to know the mystery of the kingdom of God. 
all your life. You ever wonder why anybody been saved for more than 20 years? Yeah, a lot of people are putting their hands up. You could read something you read now today that you read 20 years ago and you get something brand new out of it. Why is that? The word didn't change. You changed. You grew. Life did a number on you too, right? Good and bad. But you're a different person today than when you read it 20 years ago and you're seeing it through a different lens and it's so powerful and alive that it gives you a whole new form of nourishment now than what you got the first time. That's not unusual. Children can get a basic understanding, like if you're teaching them how to go fishing, when they're 10 years old. But now at 20, they get a whole new grasp of that process. And that's how God wants us to be. And he wants us to be so good that we're as good as that guy playing the guitar when it comes to knowing how to translate between heaven and earth. And if you just think of that picture, he was not striving, was he? He looked bored. He wasn't bored. He liked what he was doing. But he just had his eyes closed and he was leaning back and he was so, so familiar with that guitar in his lap because that's all he had ever done his whole life that he could hear something and translate it instantly into his fingers on both hands. Super complicated, but the dexterity came because of his level of understanding of what he was doing. And when you spend time in the Word, it's going to return. It's going to give you a positive dividend on that. It's going to help you make better decisions. The Bible in, in, in the Psalms, it says it makes wise the simple. The law of the Lord is perfect. It's complete. And it takes a simple person and makes them wise. Simple doesn't mean in, uh, ignorant. It just means uninformed. But you don't need to be informed in all the details to make good decisions. So all the degrees can become chains around us of logic and reasoning. And I have degrees. I don't want to be that person that says you shouldn't get an education. But it always has to be subservient to the will of God. That is the servant. He is the leader. Far above us. His ways are far above our ways. And we're in a really like stronghold in the New York region of this intellectual version of Christianity that is trying to normalize sin. Right? And wants you to think, Oh, no, that was the people in the old days thought that, but you could read the Bible this way, and it's basically anything goes. And that's not what it says. And the church has always read it the same way. It's not going to change now, but people would love it to change, like some kind of decaffeinated version. It's not going to be decaf. <laughs> so that's a little bit of a wake-up call. If Jesus says to the Pharisees, who are the leaders of the church, they, we, they wouldn't have called it the church. They would have called it the synagogue. But it was still the Father's business in the earth. The priests, many of them became Christians. You know that, right? Yeah. The church in Jerusalem in the early days was made up of converted Jews. Nicodemus was a Pharisee. Yeah. Paul was a Pharisee. Yeah. So they weren't completely lost. They took the word that was in them already, and I'll have to move my microphone here, but they took this book that they knew so well and now they had to shift their thinking and look at it through another lens. It's back to my picture again. You see, Jesus was just like reaching, reaching down to them. Here's the Apostle Paul who served under Gamaliel, who had all the head knowledge, but Jesus said, you know what? I want to take you up to another level now. And I'm going to give you a different lens to look at the word through. And, and every one of us here should say, yes, Father, do that for me. Because no matter how long I've been saved, I want to look at it in a fresh lens. I want to see it anew. And if he said to you, the prostitutes, I'll quote it directly, the tax collectors and prostitutes are going into the kingdom of God ahead of you, that's a very strong warning that you're doing some of it right. You know the word, but you're not teaching it properly. You're, you're using the lens of the word to filter people out. And I want you to filter people in. You think you're better than they are because you know the word. I want you to realize that because you know the word, you now have a duty to serve them and to look at everybody equally. And they didn't do that. And that's what religion does. It starts to pull rank on, on other people. 